A good evening to all of you from wherever you're watching us. Welcome to New Life Seventh Day Adventist Church. And this is a PCM week of spiritual emphasis, and we are at day five. We've been examining the theme from victory to victory. And I am glad that you've joined in from wherever. Uh, I know this week has been a big blessing to the comrades who've been attending, and God has a special blessing for you. So if you are watching and have tuned into this channel, please do not change that dial. My name is, Just, uh, is Justice Jirunyaga. I think uh, I was about to forget my name there for a moment. I don't know if this is what uh, victory uh, to victory means, but uh, it's uh, a pleasure being here. I was a student at uh, Moi University, and uh, probably by the mere fact that I'm forgetting my name, it shows you that I've been out of campus for a little while. And uh, today I'm joined with a panel of people who've actually finished campus, and they'll be telling us many, many, many stories about their campus days and their after days uh, after they left campus. So I will start with the lady to my right. City of Nairobi. <laughs> And I am happy to be here today. Thank you, Michelle. I, I, it seems that age is also getting on you. You're forgetting the article, the, or is it the university? Yes, next, uh, my sister. You're very much welcome. Praise God. Amen. Uh, my name is Vini Gisore. Uh, I went to Moi University in Eldoret. Right. Thank you, Vini. I, I see there's somebody else who was in Muzda, like myself, as we used to call ourselves. So I'll go to the gentleman on the right. Praise God. Amen. My name is Paul Ataro. I studied at uh, Technical University of Kenya. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we have Tuxda in the house, and you're welcome to this panel. And lastly, uh, to the elder, uh, the first shall be the last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, praise God. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Nyambare. I studied at uh, Vision Institute of Professionals and St. Paul's University. Wow. So he's been to many universities, and uh, we see that uh, this panel is well represented by alumni from the different universities in Kenya. Now, uh, I am not sure who wants to go first, but we need to understand. Uh, I think I will start with the one who probably left uh, campus the very recent, very recently, and that's Paul. What is the one thing that you remember about your campus days? that, uh, you know, sticks to your mind, anything, even if it's a food, anything that you really treasure and value during your, uh, about your campus days? I'd say the church community because uh, it formed a large part of my campus experience, mostly from my, my second year um, proceeding to um, the last day I was there. Um, yeah, so I think it's the most memorable. Um, the teachings I got there, the, uh, the family, the fellowship, yeah, so I'd say that's, that's, that was campus for me. Okay. So you, you remember the church experience. Yeah. And uh, if I was, I would just probe a little bit further, what, uh, what are the, some of the roles that you played in church? Um, I was first a member. Okay. Um, and then I was, uh, I served in the um, PM department. What um, is PM department? Um, pastoral, oh, personal ministry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, I also served in the um, eldership. Um, yeah, I served in eldership, and I think that was it for me uh, in campus church. Okay, so you seem to have been very busy uh, at your campus uh, during your campus life, uh, and uh, even made it uh, to become a church elder, which is very commendable. Uh, Vinny, what do you remember uh, about your campus days? Honestly, if you've been to Musda, the music, uh -huh. you know, the, the choir was just a heavenly choir. Yes. And the choir would sing and you feel like you're honestly at the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That was my experience. I used to enjoy going for choir practices. Like even when I'd come to Nairobi, I'd just be like, I really, I even want to follow online. You know, like it's just that beautiful experience. So choir and the music groups um, in school, I think that really categorized part of my most beautiful experiences in school. Right. It's all right. Thank you, Vinny. Michelle, campus days at the university. What do you really uh, cherish and remember? 
the congregation was a powerful choir in itself. Okay. I mean, the singing <laughs> at the University of Nairobi Church was the best, and I still miss it up to this day, and I always enjoy going back during the alumni sabbaths just to sing with the congregation. That was beautiful. Um, I also appreciated that we had ministries to support the different groups within the different campuses. And I served as a welfare um, leader for our ministry. I was in ACK ministry, which is one of the ministries. And the role of the ministry was to make you feel part of the family of the greater you want star, to engage in social activities, to have Bible studies together, and to pray together. And that ministry really held my hand through campus. And that is where I actually got most of my friends who are still my friends up to this point. And by our, you mean uh, Adventist women? Ak, ak. Oh, so ak. there were, there were okay. different okay. ministries in yes. the main company okay. church. Okay. And so the one that I belonged to was the Ak ministry. Ak ministry, okay. There were, okay. I think there were five ministries, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So like at the university, you had different ministries. So once you will come to campus, you're divided into the different uh, ministries. Is it that you choose or you're, you're sent there? I think... I, or, or it's a mixture. There are people who will be put at one place and... You are, you are assigned okay. the ministry because what the company would do, the university church would do, during orientation, the first um, day when you get to the school and there is that registration booth for Seventh-day Adventists and they would collect the names of all the first years and then they would allocate you know, the different students to the different ministries. And so, but I think I was allocated to a different ministry, but I ended up in ARC because my brother was there before me. <laughs> and so it felt safer to join a ministry where my elder brother was at the time. So yeah. that's how I ended up in ARC ministry. Okay. All right, all right. So, uh, and uh, I'm sure you must have really enjoyed uh, your stay where your elder brother is. Uh, and for those who probably were put in a ministry and their elder brother was not there, they should not mind because we have an elder brother known as Jesus. Uh, elder Emmanuel, your campus days, probably you can tell us even the years. Eh? Uh, wh wh when did you finish at St. Paul's? Well, at St. Paul's, uh, well, <laughs> I, I don't know how to remember years, yeah. but uh, I I think it should be not so long ago, maybe 2013. Okay. Or 2012. Okay. Uh, but my most memorable years were at uh, Vision Institute, and the one thing that comes to my mind now is my experience was a bit different from you because um, I was involved in establishing the SDA group in the university. Wow. And um, this is where I also, you know, had preached my very first sermon. Wow. Wow. We also have uh, pioneers in the panel today. And uh, it's, it's a blessing. So uh, if I was just to chime in, because I know probably the viewer is wondering what my experience was. One of the things that I will never forget uh, about my campus experience is carrying uh, speakers like uh, these speakers for the sound eh? and the PA from the fourth floor, uh, the third floor to the ground floor every Sabbath morning and in the evening taking them back uh, because uh, when I went to campus, I was like, Michelle, my elder brother was there and that was what he was doing. He was a deacon. So we would wake up in the morning, uh, we sweep the, uh, the, con the church, we ensure it is clean, the two of us, and then set up the sound and then I will start, uh, you know, I will be seated there at the piano and now people will just trickle in. And uh, probably they will think that the speakers brought themselves from the third floor. <laughs> so the sound uh, team is also uh, an important uh, ministry. And I think that's one of the things that I learned in campus, actually how even to tune the sound. Now, let me ask, uh, in, in your assessment, as you look back and uh, probably... Uh, uh, at your campus days and your involvement right now in the different congregations that you are in, where would you say that you have been very active? Is it at the campus days or after campus? 
Who wants to take that one? I think for, yes, for me, the campus days created, it built the foundation for my current service. And that is where I build momentum and continued. And I feel like now I'm even more engaged than I was then. I think it reached a point even after campus that I, I beat more than I could chew because there's, that, there's always that thing where you get so much into ministry that you end up experiencing ministry burnout. And I think I experienced that immediately after campus because of now um, diving deep into church activities and church um, settings and then adding that with external supporting ministries and now combining both efforts. It, I've been very, very active outside of campus outside, all yeah. right. and it's it, it and thinking about it looking back at campus i was still as active and i feel like now i'm just taking more because of the exposure and the training and the experience that i gained during my time in campus okay uh thank you michelle anyone else with another view even if it's the same i think it's both for me okay um because during my campus days, I wasn't, I was, while I had po uh, like positions in the leadership at church, I was the Adventist women, women's leader in church with other roles. I still found comfort in my local church. I think uh, just a few weekends I'd be in Eldoret, but most of my weekends I'd be in Nairobi in my local church. And I also had uh, leadership roles in my local church as an ambassador leader and um, as a youth leader later on. And uh, that meant activity for me uh, in my local church during my campus years. Uh, during my campus years, I had a very supportive sister who was involved in supporting ministries. We'll get to that later on in this discussion. But she introduced me to Alive Kenya uh, as early as, uh, as high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I transitioned to campus, uh, I had deep interest in mission work, you know, and in ministry in general. Mm -hmm. And so I'd say back then I was quite active in my local church as a student uh, and in supporting ministries. And even now I'm still active in my local church and in the ministries that I'm a part of. Yeah, so I think it's 50-50. Wow, that's, that's really encouraging to know. Probably, uh, dear viewer and the audience that are seated here, uh, you may be wondering, uh, you've just come out of campus and you feel like you miss that warmth that you had in Musda or Vision or the University of Nairobi or Tuxda. And uh, probably once you finished campus, you just came into New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church, for example, and you found that the congregation was too big and you wonder, how can I really plug in? And of course, I'm not sure about you, but my observation has been that many people, once they leave campus, they, they, they are normally trying to figure themselves out in terms of what next. It's not many who get to transition, uh, like, say, uh, Vinny or Michelle. And uh, for the gentlemen who are seated here, a question to you. Uh, what do you think normally is the cause of that kind of, you know, not being able to plug in for young people who've just finished campus, very active at campus, but once they come outside, it's, it's like it's a, a paradigm shift. I think um, even from my own personal experience and what I have observed, um, you know, church in campus is quite different from church, you know, in, in a local church setting. Mm -hmm. In terms of um, you know, in campus, uh, looks like there is, it seems like there is a lot of room to you know activate your energy, and um, you know, and, and compared to a local church where you know uh, this is like uh, maybe to use that word the establishment mm -hmm. uh, where most young people feel like there is so much. There are so many, so many red tapes you need to cross before you can mm -hmm. get actively engaged, mm -hmm. uh, you know, compared to, you know, a uh, campus where, you know, as long as you are available, there is always something for you to do. Uh, not many, you know, restrictions here and there. 
Uh, so that's what I see many, many, many young people struggle with uh, in terms of their involvement in local churches as compared to uh, in university or campus. Right. I, I think uh, Brother Emmanuel has set uh, a very important point that there seems to be, you know, a lot of bureaucracy, probably in bigger establishments, so that uh, churches that have been there long ago, it's very hard for you to find your way through and uh, find a place to plug in. Elder Ataro. Yes. Um, I'd say um, we as Adventists forget that we are a movement before we we, were, um, we are a movement before we, we are an organization. Um, that is to say, um, we'd come to church to listen to preachings, but will not um, get engaged in the simple work like carrying speakers and others. This I say because I have observed people in my generation and people who have, who are, who have gone before me, uh, who, are, who are not so old, and... I've been, able to, I've been able to not, um, I'll not call it laziness, but um, some, yeah, some comfort just um, yeah, sitting at the back. Uh, I think if we are to be aroused to the reality that we are a movement and we need to um, be upstanding, we need to be active, I don't think anyone would lack anything to do in the church. However big New Life is, for example, New Life being um, one of the big churches, um, I don't think you miss, anyone would miss a space to be of service, um, um, however small or big it is. So I'd say um, post campus, most probably want now to walk around churches, um, um, have, which is, I'll not say it's bad, bad but um, it has an effect to the local church when you're not in the church and being active in the church. That you just need to brighten the corner where you are. So let me start, uh, pick it up from you. So, what uh, you said, what position did you have by the time you were leaving uh, Tuxta? Um, I, I, I served in the eldership department. Yeah. So, you are an elder? Yes. Uh, first elder or? Yeah, first elder. Oh, you are the first elder? Yes. Now, let me ask, where do you go to church currently? Um, I go to Westlands Church. Uh huh. Um, do, you, do you serve as an elder there? Not yet. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I think there's been some tear gas around. Eh? So uh, you don't serve as an elder there. So, but you're telling us that it's still possible to serve. So how do you deal with that? Uh, coming from a position of being a first elder and then going to a place. Okay, let me ask, what, what position do you have, if at all, any in Westlands? I'm pretty new. Um, I transitioned back home for a while just to um, take a breather. Um, so that sounds like nothing. Yes. Eh? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to cope. So you don't have any position. Let me ask, do, do people even know that you are first elder in the, in the first place? Those who know, who Those who know you. Yes. So you're telling us now... Uh, I'm just now being practical. There's, some, there's somebody who's watching there and was a first elder somewhere, but left and felt that you know change of environment. You go into a church. In fact, I know of some churches that they say they have to ordain you once again if you ordained at campus. So how do you deal with that? Now, uh, give us a practical example of how you can serve. Um, Part of what um, I did while I was an elder was pastoral work that had to do with praying, um, 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 helping others in spiritual matters and in other, other spaces that I could. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'll take the simplest example. When a call is asked to, for someone to volunteer to pray, mm -hmm. um, I'm open to stand um, if, yeah, very quickly and pray. If there are chairs to be stuck, mm -hmm. I'll do that because... Um, it is in the little things that um, we, 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 we shine the, Christ, the, the, the Christian in us. Mm. Um, and I'd say um, me get in the same manner also, and God appointing me to, to serve in whatever space I, I served was, I'd say primarily, my, my coming to Tuxda, I, I see it as a miracle because mm. I wasn't that first year. Okay. Yeah, but um, me getting there um, and um, being used by God in the, um, 
the, the various spaces was simply because of service. So um, I take that to, to be something that every Christian um, to that first elder or elder who is asking what next, um, yeah, serve. That is, serve. That is so you're, you're telling us that we need to take the Elisha model, that after being called by Elijah, the first thing he went to do was to wash the hands of the prophet <laughs> for a while and to uh, mirror. So that's one example. Any other examples that we may be having, how you can serve now that you're out of campus? I think the other thing that... Um, Sometimes I find unfortunate is, uh, um, you know, many young people after campus just come to church and sit at the back and wait for someone to give them something to do. Mm -hmm. um, my approach was a bit different. Yeah. Because I believe that, you know, the fact that you've been through those experiences means you have something that you can give to your local church. Mm -hmm. So my experience was, I went and actually asked for something that I could do. Ah, okay. I mean, if you come to your church, there is a committee you can serve in. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you don't like uh, the way maybe, for example, the evangelistic campaigns mm -hmm. are being, on, being organized and you think that you, the church can benefit from your experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't wait. You can volunteer. I know in, in the Adventist church, we fear being volunteer, you know, volunteering ourselves mm. because we feel like you know, it can be confused with pride. Mm. But I feel like uh, you, 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 it's a disservice to your local church. Mm -hmm. you, know, you came from a local church that probably are struggling with finances and you went to school, studied accounting, and you just come and sit at the back. I mean, go and volunteer yourself ask, you know, what, what is it that I can do? Um, if, 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 I'm sure if you join any group, you will find a place to, to, to plug in. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I see the mics are up. Who should go first? Uh, let's start with uh, Avini and then it come to Michelle. Um, to top, to, top uh, to that, um, in university, I, I got an opportunity to, to serve in the church development committee. So our church was coming up in Moy University, and we had to fundraise. And we did a wonderful fundraising model. We managed to get money. We bought land in one year, and then we fundraised, and uh, just a lot of good mobilization in church development. And so when I transitioned to my local church, which was also uh, doing a um, development project, I remember one day during the church business meeting, the development committee gave, was giving their report, and I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, how are we building our church? Uh, you know, we've, we've taken too long to build our church. I mean, in Moi University, we did this thing in one year. You know, why, why are things not working here? And I was very radical with my position. I remember during that church business meeting. And that is how um, they identified me to serve as a member of the church development committee, to just share my ideas in that committee and to help the church, um, you know, the church to, to grow. And what I want to tell any young person out there, you see, school is an opportunity for us to study. See, in Ezra chapter 7 verse 1, there's a model given there. Uh, maybe I can just read it uh, okay. quickly. Uh, Ezra chapter 7 verse 1. Uh, the Bible says, um, it talks about three, three principles. Um, it says, study it, read it, and then teach it. Study, read, and teach. That's Ezra chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, it's refusing to open, but yes, here it is, yes. Um, Ezra chapter, did I say 7, verse 1? Verse, yeah, it's chapter 7. Okay, I'm not, all right. I'll get it shortly, okay. but it's Ezra chapter 7. Mm. And the principle here is to study it, to do it, and then to teach it. Verse That's 10. when verse, verse 10. Verse 10. Mm. Oh, right. And I've even highlighted it here. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach it in Israel. Mm -hmm. So he prepared the heart to seek the law. So, and then he did it and then he taught it. 
So school gives us an opportunity to learn these things, you know, to, to build your experience in different committees as a deacon, as a deaconess, as a committee member. And then when you come out of school and even while you're in school, it's your opportunity to do it and then teach it, you know, teach these principles to other people. You know, they're saying Gen Z's, yes. <laughs> teach, <laughs> teach, teach, teach other people how to apply these principles and God will, will will supply. Yes, uh, Michelle, in one minute, what is the other way that you can serve and how you've been serving after campus? A key step is to settle into a church, join a congregation, okay. have your membership mm -hmm. to in, um, in that church, mm -hmm. because that in itself is a barrier. You cannot participate in a church business meeting if you're not a member of that church in the books of the church. You cannot serve in a committee if you're not a member. So the first thing that you should do as a student transitioning from campus, settle in your local congregation, or if you've moved away from your local congregation, identify a congregation near you and become a member of that church. And that will open up ways for you to participate. A good example is Westlands SDA Church, which is a very young church that Paul and I are a part of. Okay. That church is young and it, is, um, it takes up members who bring their names because the congregation is as little as 80 people. So th the moment we get a transfer of membership, we assign you a role. Whether you are an elder in your campus, whether you are not active, when you join a congregation and your name is in the books, you're easily picked out, even if you do not volunteer yourself like Emmanuel did. We will be able to pick you out from the membership book to then give you a role, and that is how you start getting involved in church activities. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Michelle. And, uh if you're looking for a church, you've been told about Westlands, and there's also New Life, and there's also Lovington, and many other, yes, Mwangaza. and Mwangaza. There are churches out there that you can join in. Now, one of the things that we used to love about campus is mission work. And uh, is it also possible to be plugged in, in, into a mission, or should I ask it directly? Uh, Vinny, are you plugged into any mission group or many, any, any uh, mission entity or supporting ministry? Uh, yes, definitely. Alive Kenya. Okay. Uh, I joined Alive Kenya immediately. I finished um, high school, and uh, I was interested in just going to Pokot and unentered areas to do mission work. So, what is Alive Kenya? Alive Kenya is Africans living in view of eternity. This okay. is a group of students and young professionals who are passionate about uh, spreading the gospel in unentered areas of this country. But I remember particularly I went for one conference which was at Loa Kabete. They do, uh, Alive Kenya does uh, mission empowerment conferences to empower missionaries and equip them uh, for tools and skills necessary for the mission field. And so I went to this uh, mission empowerment conference and they told me, dare and do not regret. You know, they were telling us to, to, to aim for the best and nothing less than that. They were telling us, you know, they were telling us aim at excellence. You know, people who are presenting were excellent people and I was like, like, I want to be a part of these people. And that's how I joined Mission Work. You know, they told us, if you want to do Mission Work, God will provide. And, you know, if you, you, you don't have to have money right now, get into, into Mission Work. And, and, and that's how I got into Alive Kenya and into the ministry. But I also started a foundation that works with street ministry okay. while I was in, in, in university. And so those two ministries have really been fundamental in building my mission, uh, my desire to work for God and my passion for ministry. Wow. Uh, I can see Emmanuel's mic. Uh, is, is there any other mission uh, group that you can think about? Well, uh, uh, maybe alive. Uh -huh. I remember alive specifically and new life because mm. I remember I was seated right there mm. when alive started. We uh -huh. had our first conference here uh -huh. and that's where you know uh, my experience started um, and it was launched in this church. Mm. So I have very special memories mm. of uh, this corner and, um, and, and, and to me it was the challenge to uh, you know, just do more than uh, what I was doing in my local church, mm. 
uh, you know, having a global view of mission work, thinking about places that are not, have not been entered, and also thinking about the possibilities of me being involved as an individual in my own uh, small way. Yeah, so you're seated there. Thank you, Manuel, for that. Uh, it seems that everybody ought to be at Alive Kenya <laughs> because it's a very good place to be at, and uh, you get to have the warmth of fellowship. And that's the beauty of uh, transitioning from uh, you know, campus and getting also a group of believers who you can work with and who can keep you accountable over and above uh, the local church like Westlands. Uh, Paul is... Uh, I now see why Paul was, an, was the first elder. He's a very humble man. He's been involved in, while we're talking at the back, he's been involved in something quite interesting. Uh, I hear he's in charge of some logistics for a certain uh, uh, supporting ministry. Probably you could tell us about it. Over and above volunteering to pray, there's something that you've been doing. Probably you can mention. Um, it's GYC. Um, so what, what is GYC? Uh, GIC is uh, uh, general uh, general youth conference uh, <laughs> general conference youth. What what is GIC? GIC um, it's an acronym. It stands for Generation Youth Christ. Okay. Um, for Christ. Mm -hmm. And so it is. Um, I'd say it is um, a youth. Um, a youth should. It's a youth um, ministry um, that. More, more like what she has said, alive. Um, they more or less um, are in line with um, getting youth and um, having them being in service and um, mission work and conferences just to empower the youth to go out there and stand as Christians who they have been called to be. So how did, uh, because I've also been trying to read a, a little bit about GYC, because when I was, we were preparing for this, I discovered that all these people who are seated here with me are busy preparing uh, a part of GYC as well. And uh, there seems to be a connection between GYC and uh, PCM. Uh, could you, somebody can mention a little bit about that? Because it's also important for the comrades out there to know that there's something that they can do even once they leave campus. Yeah, so the general... Youth for Christ was established by a group of college students. Ah, university students. Yes, okay. university students who desired to support the work of the Seventh Day Adventist Church and, you know, supporting young people who have a lot of energy and they need, they want that energy to be utilized in God's work and for training. And so what this movement does is that it trains young people for evangelism. It also creates a community where young people can come and share the experiences together and also organizes those conferences which we, are, we will talk about where these young people meet from all parts of the country or all parts of the world to talk about the work that they are doing, to strengthen each other through prayer, to have those charge moments where you listen to you know, your favorite speakers and ministries around the world that are doing God's work to just ignite their power in us and after those conferences to then go and apply those lessons in the mission field, in the communities that we live in, and in our neighborhoods. So, uh, if I heard you correctly, uh, Michelle, you mean that there can on, it is also possible to have funkies or functions after campus? Exactly. And oh, okay. now these conferences serve as like SDA youth funkies. Ah. And I'm sure for those of us who've also <laughs> been involved in the PCM conferences, in the ECD conferences, it's a similar structure just like um, GYC. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that because, uh, you know, for most of the young people, once we finish campus, uh, say for instance, if you had the gift of preaching, uh, you feel like probably I have to leave what I'm doing so that I go probably do a Masters of Divinity and then become a pastor and all that. While there is so much space that is there in supporting ministries. In fact, uh, Ellen White says that this work that uh, we are doing towards the tail end will have to be finished by the laity coming together with the conferences and the churches so that they can help the pastors to finish the work. So you're seated there and wondering uh, about a ministry that you can plug into 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we recommend strongly GYC, there is a Life Kenya, and many other ministries. Uh, Vini, I hear there is something that is coming up uh, that GYC is organizing. Probably you could uh, comment on that a little bit. Um, you see, Ellen White, Ellen White in Christian Service says uh, that if youth were rightly trained and educated, then a work for God would be accomplished like no other. In fact, how soon would be the returning of Christ Jesus? And so GYC has organized a conference uh, right here in Africa. Oh. Uh, GYC has where, where been... Where is that going to be? It's going to be at Aua, just right here, you know, in our conference. You know, Aua should be in the... This is in the CKC, I believe. Yeah, New Life is in CKC. So yes, it's right here in this conference. Um, uh, and we'll be hosting it between the 3rd to the 6th of July. Uh, and we've invited guests from across the continent uh, to come and minister with us. We even have special sessions for teenagers, for ambassadors, specially curated uh, to minister to our needs as campus-going students, as um, uh, you know, young people with unique challenges in the Christian community. Uh, immediately after that, we are also going to have missions. We have partnered, you know, we are talking about partnership with the local church, partnership with the global church. And so GYC in partnership with the ECD, ECD is East Central Division, that is where we are hosted. And uh, we have planned for homecoming missions that will be taking place in different parts of the ECD countries, that is from Uganda. And that, et cetera. So uh, probably you can tell us some of the programs that will be there. You've spoken about uh, relationships. There's a comrade who's dealing with relationship issues exactly. and needs to be there. Mm -hmm. What else will be there? Uh, yeah, there's prophecy. You know, prophecy, young people, yes. we want to know the times we are living mm -hmm. in. There's digital, there's media, you mm -hmm. know, how, how to interact in the digital space. Yes. Uh, there's mental health. That's a big issue with young people today. Mm -hmm. And so we are also going to look into that. We are going to look at what is our history. You know, when we look at the history of the mm -hmm. church, we see that young people are fundamental in mm -hmm. starting this, this church. Mm -hmm. And we want to learn more about the reform and their examples and how they can be an inspiration to how we can finish the work in this generation mm. of youth for Christ. Wow, wow. There seems to be some uh, a power-packed program that is coming up. Uh, you said from the 3rd of July to the 6th of July. That is in a few weeks' time. And there's a comrade who's seated there and he says, I really want to attend this conference. Uh, how do they get to get there? Uh, how much does it cost? Because... Uh, right now, there's a lot of conversations about money uh, around the air. So how much does it cost? 1,620 Kenyan shillings is the cost per, um, per head. And you can access it um, by going th to the GYC website, GYC Africa website, GYC.Africa. Mm -hmm. And there you can register for the day, the day pass package, which will facilitate your attendance from 3rd to 6th. Wow. For only 1,620 20. shillings, yes. you can attend for, from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. And there's a better deal. Uh -huh. um, if you are coming in groups, mm -hmm. from groups of 20, between 20 to 30, um, you only need $100. Mm -hmm. um, if you are coming in groups of 30 to 40, you'll only need $150. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you surpass uh, the 40 going onwards, you will um, only need $200 to attend. Yes. Wow. So uh, do not tell us that we did not tell you. There's something good that is coming up, and uh, there is going to be a lot of discussions. Uh, I, I was talking to uh, Vini and also have been following this uh, GYC Africa uh, conference preparations, and I am meant to understand that one of the themes that will be d discussed is one one, uh, oneness in mission and uh, how in these last days we need to partner together to be one in mission so that even the transition from uh, public universities to you know now normal life we say when you go outside there can be easy so that we can be found doing God's work so I hope that you're planning to be there at uh, GYC Africa in a few weeks time uh, let's pull together resources and 
make sure that we get to, uh, to get there. There are many speakers, I'm told, who will be there, and you cannot afford to miss this uh, conference that has been organized by an entity that was begun by a comrade like you and myself, a former comrade. Am I still our comrade? Now that I forget many things. Now, in the interest of time, we have a few seconds, and I want just uh, Elder just to give a parting shot and Michelle, and then we offer a prayer. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I can't remember the exact words, but I think I came across a, a reference. I said, one day we will get to heaven, and I hope all of us, I know all of us will get there by God's grace. And God will open our eyes, and he will show us the possibilities of the things that we would have done if we only we put all our energies to the work. And she says that we will wish that God brings us back here. And so my prayer to you young people is that we will not be young for long. You know, spend all your energies, you know, so that when you get to heaven, you'll have no regrets. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Michelle. Amen. And one quote that I really appreciate from Ellen White, she says that um, we can only defeat the many sins that beset us through aggressive service. So if there is something that you're struggling with, if there are issues in your life that you're dealing with, the best way to overcome, immerse yourself in God's work. Be a member of a congregation, and from there, whatever the Lord brings your way, your response should be, here am I, Lord, send me. Wow. Friends and comrades who have been following this uh, segment, we are glad that you joined us. And the theme for this week has been from victory to victory. You have been victorious in your campus life. You do not need to not be victorious in your life after campus. Once you leave campus, there is an endless list of possibilities that await you for you to do God's work. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar to the very duty ever near you. Now be true. Brighten the corner where God puts you in whatever corner of this world. What we are saying is this, friends, that God has a work for us to do. Once you leave campus, get into that local congregation, even if it means sweeping. Do it with all your heart as if you're doing it for God. But most of all, you can even start a supporting ministries or even get plugged into different ministries that are there. And we've mentioned quite a few, like Alive Kenya and GYC uh, Africa. Friends, it's been a pleasure having you. And uh, with that, we just pray that the Lord may ignite that fire that was once burning in you if you are in campus and you left and you're not in mission. But if you're active in mission, keep on until the Lord of harvest comes. At this point, allow us just to bow down for a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Our dear loving Father, we thank you that little is much when you are in it. Lord, we thank you for the discussions that we've had in this panel. We thank you for Emmanuel, uh, Vini, for Michelle and also Elder Ataro, and for the blessing that they have been in your work. We thank you that even after they left campus, they did not down their tools, but they put their hands on the gospel plow. And Lord, you've been using them immensely, even as they are used of you to prepare the first ever GYC Africa conference. Lord, we pray for a special blessing for that conference. And there, were, uh, there could be somebody who was listening who was debating as to whether they should attend. Lord, may you make it clear and plain that they ought to be there so that you can feed them in a special way. But Lord, there uh, may be a comrade who left campus and was wondering what next. But today, Lord, you have made it clear to them that they need to get back to that active service that they took part in, even if they've been a little bit um, in a slumber mode. Lord, we pray that may you send your Holy Spirit to ignite that fire once again and to revive them and to reform them after your image. Lord, bless the programs that have been going on in this church and even as we prepare to listen from uh, the pastor, Lord, may you bless him immensely so that he can be a blessing to us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed evening. And please do not change that dial. The powerful messages that are coming up right after this segment. Thank you.
for us to do in these last days. And his desire is that we all may be one in him. You see, friends, Jesus made a special prayer for you and me long time ago. And this prayer is recorded in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 21, where Jesus prayed that they all may be one, as thou art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, you may be wondering whether it is possible in these days that we are living in that is mud with sin for us to be one in a world where sin has caused division along different lines of culture, race, and even tribe. Well, we need not despair because the plan of salvation is about God seeking to restore us to be part of his one big family, one in hope, one in doctrine, one in mission, and even one in charity and eventually assemble us in heaven where we will be part of the one big universal family. Now on the 3rd to the 6th of July, the year 2024, at the Adventist University of Africa, people from all walks of life will be assembling together to examine this theme, one, for the very first GYC Africa conference. I look forward to seeing you there.